Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Mike's Garage. So as promised, this is part two of the Eden Swap. So as many of you know, I did an Eden Swap on my 2003 Mach 1 Mustang. So it's actually a ported Eden Swap that I did with a custom pulley up on top. So I've got a 2.60. So I'm going to go through how to do the Eden Swap uh, step by step. Uh, first video went over what you need and now how to do it. So before we actually begin real quick, uh, just wanted to remind you if you are familiar with my site, you probably subscribed already. If you are not, please subscribe because it helps tremendously with creating additional content and hopefully be able to get additional vehicles to also work on. All right, so let's begin. So we're going to Mach1Registry.org. So this article was made by MachGSXR, uh, the same person who made the list of all the parts that you'll need for a complete Eden Swap. So in this article, I'm going to go step by step on the Eden Swap. I'm going to give some clarification and then give you my uh, my two cents and and lessons learned, if you will. So we'll just kind of go step through step by this, and and I'll walk you through it. Uh, so the first thing that you need to do is obviously disconnect the battery and uh, you're going to want to remove the battery tray as well. It's going to give you a little bit more room, especially when it comes to trying to get the uh, power steering pump in its um, uh, mounted in the same with the, uh, with the alternator. So definitely disconnect the battery, remove the tray. Uh, you're going to remove the shaker. It's got two bolts. They're about two inches long, one on each side. They're uh, silver in, in color. So you're going to want to remove those and then the shaker assembly itself should lift off. There will be a couple of hoses that, that need to be removed, the drainage ones. And then once that's gone, then you have, I believe, four bolts that are underneath to remove the shaker mount and just kind of lift that off. Also remove the CAI uh, assembly and the air filter assembly. Make sure you disconnect the MAF or mass airflow sensor that is. And then uh, drain all your fluids. So you want to drain your coolant and your oil. We're going to replace most of the coolant hoses. So obviously it makes sense to drain the coolant. With the oil you're going to be um, taking off your old oil cooler and using the Cobra one. And just in case I forget to mention this when it comes to the Cobra oil cooler installation. With the new Cobra one, make sure you thoroughly take it apart and clean it. I did that on mine and, and spent a good couple hours doing it. You can get the rebuild O-ring kit on eBay. It's about 20, 25 bucks. Definitely take the time to clean it out because any, any metal that got trapped into it might be released into your engine. So obviously you don't want to do the even swap and hurt your motor. So make sure you thoroughly clean that out. And then it talks about removing the bumper. So you've got push pins that primarily hold it in. So you're going to want to get a push pin remover tool. You can get them on eBay, Amazon. Uh, I got mine from Harbor Freight. It was, you know, maybe five to seven dollars and was able to remove them. Uh, there might be a couple screws, but most of it was pretty much uh, push pins. So you're going to pull it straight out. Obviously, you need to remove the headlights and disconnect the fog lights as well and just kind of pull it out. They mention in here that there is a black foam piece and in this image, it kind of shows it. Make sure that you don't damage this because that's that's, you know, absorbs the uh, uh, a good portion of the impact. I know it looks flimsy and it's foam, but you know, that, that's for up to five miles an hour that that absorbs impact. And I'm sure it, it, it helps if it was a, you know, a, a faster impact. So make sure that you protect it and, and right here and then on the other side there, it's kind of held on. So just be careful so you don't damage it. I think the person who made this uh, post talked about how they damaged theirs. So I was able to do it without any damage. And then it talks about the rivets holding it. Goes through here as far as with the coolant being drained. So to start removing the, the uh, radiator hoses, you're really not going to reuse any of them. So just take them all off. The only ones that you're really going to leave on it are going to be for your uh, heater core. But 
one thing I would recommend is at some point do the head cooling mod just because you're going to have a lot more heat with putting on the supercharger. It's not a have to, it's not listed, but something you might want to think about. And then remove the crossover tube and, and then also the thermostat. And it talks about most of it will be trashed and that's true. But just kind of put it off to the side uh, until you have everything complete. Talks about removing the uh, couple of the bolts for the alternator, so four bolts there. Move the bracket aside, wiggle the crossover loose, and the crossover tube uh, essentially uh, goes into the. I can't really see it here, but it 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 essentially would sit in this front area, and when you do take your upper intake off and we'll get to that with the injectors and everything else. Do make sure that that you tape off the intake um, ports really well. It's vitally important and you'll find out why when we get to that. All right, so let's go to the next part. As far as, okay, so now it talks about um, wiring is loose. All right, so now it talks about removing the upper intake Move an EGR, move an EGR tube. Definitely make sure that you uh, remove that alternator. Talked a little bit about that there, but you know, make sure you do that. Uh, so the EGR, EGR tube talks about the vacuum hoses that need to be disconnected. Kind of label uh, where everything uh, goes. I know with with mine, I had to disconnect everything because I was rebuilding my engine at the time, but. Labeling your connectors is extremely important. That way you know what plugs into what. Just because sometimes when you're doing, you know, a swap or, or anything major, uh, time flies by and you work on a little bit this week and next week. And, you know, you don't want to lose track of where everything went. So definitely label things. Pictures are always good as well. Talks about moving the cruise control cable and throttle cable. So FYI. The stock cruise and throttle cables that you have on your Mach 1 are not the same ones as on the 0304 Cobra. They're different lengths, so it's important that you get those as part of your swap. Here it talks about removing the uh, intake bolts. Uh, so there's eight of them, and that takes off the uh, upper uh, intake. Um, and I think that there might be an image or two on it. If not, I'll uh, uh, add some to it. Let's see here. So here's this one with the uh, intake, the upper intake removed. You can see there's the fuel rail. The injectors are, are uh, looks like that they're still kind of sitting there. But you're going to remove the rail. Obviously, you need to disconnect the injectors. And you see this image. And it just has everything disconnected and taped off. All right. So let's go back up. It says you can leave your throttle body connected to the intake, which is true because you're not going to use either one of them. Because usually with an Eden swap kit, you're going to get the Eden, you're going to get the elbow, and you're going to get uh, the throttle body uh, with it. Um, if you go with a ported Eden, a lot of times the elbow is ported and you may have a ported throttle body. That's how mine was. Okay, so uh, this goes over disconnecting the fuel system. So there's a Schrader valve, kind of like what's uh, what's on the tire, and you want to re release the pressure first before you start, you know, taking things apart in the fuel system. What you could do ahead of time, and this is just what I'd recommend before you start doing any of this, in the back driver's side corner of the trunk, there's a red button. And if you take a screwdriver or just, you know, something and kind of tap against it, it's a kill switch if you get rear-ended. So by tapping it, it'll make the little red plunger release, which kills the uh, fuel system, cuts it off, and then start the car and let it run to where it stops at idle. And then you don't have to worry about any of this when you're talking about relieving the pressure at the Schrader valve because you actually ran it to re re, uh, remove the uh, fuel pressure. So that you'd have to do that obviously ahead of time, but this is the other way, releasing the pressure at the uh, Schrader valve. 
you need to disconnect the fuel line from the fuel rail. There's a special uh, tool that you need for that. You can get it at AutoZone or what have you. Basically, it's the Ford uh, fuel line disconnect. It's the same tool that you use if you're trying to disconnect the fuel filter to replace that. Uh, so make sure that you have one of those to disconnect it. Be careful with it. There is a spring in there. You don't want to damage that, you know, when, when you're trying to do this. And it's talking about behind the intake, there's the large wiring harness, and you may have to disconnect a few things. It talks about the fuel injectors that you need to disconnect those. Remove your knock sensors. So this is probably going to be turned off in your tune anyway. Um, you could just disconnect them and just put them off to the side. You can leave them connected and just push it back, you know, kind of leave them where they're at. Totally up to you, but you're not going to use them. At this stage, you do need to put them off to the side because you're going to be grinding the bosses down flat. So like on a WAP block, you're going to have, uh, let me get an image here. You're going to have these raised pieces right here, or webbing as it's called, and then you have your two bosses right there that uh, your knock sensors go into. You want to shave these bosses, grinder, dremel, what have you. Uh, dremel might not work. You really do need a die grinder, but you're going to grind these flush with the webbing. Don't go to where it's lower than the webbing, but it needs to be flush with the webbing. If you don't go flush with the webbing, the intake won't fit right. You're going to have a leak. If you go too far down, you're actually going to potentially weaken the block. So just make sure when you grind it down that it is even with the webbing here and the webbing there. You will know when you ground enough down to where, number one, it's flat with the webbing. But number two, you could take the new intake, put it down, and then kind of rock it back and forth. And it does, well, try rocking it back and forth, and it doesn't rock. It should fit perfectly flat. And if it does that, then you know when you put the gasket on, you're good to go. It says put the knock sensors back in the valley, connect them back up. It's up to you if you want to connect them back up or not. Your, your tune is going to turn it off. If you have them plugged in, it's just going to be setting that 40 degrees advanced timing. It's never going to knock and you're going to get a check engine light. If you disconnect them, then they don't work and you're going to get a check engine light. Either way, it needs to be turned off in a tune. So it's up to you if you want to put it back into the valley or not, your call. Okay, let's see here. Okay, it talks about the hoses for the oil cooler and the thermostats, remove those. Remove the stock oil cooler, the bolts, power steering pump. So you got the four bolts that hold that. So disconnect that, kind of move that off to the side. You need to remove the radiator fan because that's going to be in your way. Make sure that you don't damage the radiator when you take it off and on. The radiator can be damaged quite easily. So, you know, be very, very careful. And even talks about here being careful because it's, it's quite easy to, uh, uh, to damage it. If you want to be extra cautious, there's only two uh, bolts that hold the radiator on, essentially. You've already taken off all the hoses. You could remove the radiator until you need to reinstall it if you want to be super careful, but just be careful and you'll, you'll essentially uh, be fine. Remove the harmonic balancer. So um, you're not going to reuse the old one. So take it off. I would recommend getting a ARP bolt to replace this with the, um, you know, when you go to put the new one on because the harmonic balancer bolts are torqued to yield and they're not reusable. So get yourself a nice ARP one ahead of time, especially if you have an issue and you need to take things back apart again. The ARP bolts are reusable, whereas the OEM ones, they're torqued to yield, use them once. So. It's always a good idea just to upgrade and get the ARP hardware. Good need to use a uh, puller, and it kind of does look like a chicken foot. And you're going to remove the um, their harmonic balancer. Pretty easy to do. Just take your time, do it slow. You'll be good to go. Uh, water pump. If you have the standard one, you could just leave it. But since you're there, 
might as well replace the water pump. Uh, realistically, it's not going to hurt anything, and you got to remember, you put that supercharger on, you're creating a lot more heat, so an efficient water pump is probably a good thing. Move the power steering pump reservoir in the bracket. You're going to want to put that off to the side. AC compressor. You don't have to completely remove it, and it mentions that there. Disconnect the bolts, move it to the side. I just use the bungee cord to keep it out of the way, and, uh, and you're good to go. Oil pan. So the front four bolts of the oil pan you need to remove because those go into the timing cover. You're going to have to remove all the timing cover bolts in the front because you need to pull the timing cover. You're going to have to loosen uh, bolts that hold on the valve covers because you're going to have to lift that up slightly and I think it talks about it right here because you're going to have to lift it up. So there is black RTV that, let me see if I could show it in one of these pictures. All right. So when you go to remove this, this this timing cover off. There's black RTV right there. Same on the other side. And then here, there, and then where the oil pan. So with that being the case, you need to loosen these up. Same with the oil pan so you can get the timing cover off. But you also need, you're going to have to need to put that, that uh, black RTV back on. And you want to be able to lift this up enough that you can kind of clean out the whole area, make sure it's good, and do a nice, a nice bead. If I can make a recommendation, where the cylinder heads meet the, the block, and you have the head gasket, which is approximately here and here on both of these, make sure that you do a good bead at those spots also, because if your head gasket is not flush forward with the lock and the heads and there's a little bit of a gap there, you're going to have an oil leak. So make sure that you use a black RTV at those uh, spots. I've got a leak right here on mine that I'm going to have to take off the timing cover this winter uh, to kind of fix. After I put on catch cans, it's not leaking that bad. It's just slight, but still bothers me. As you're removing all of this, make sure that you keep all your old hardware and you label it. It's really important. All right, so now it talks about installing. Okay, now that you have the timing cover off, time to install the Cobra one. Okay, so it talks about clean off the spots gasket goes, clean off the corners, the oil pan, make sure everything's nice and dry and then put sealant at all of those spots. So that's vitally important that you do that. When it comes to where to install the different uh, bolts, there's different lengths. So here's, a, um, here's something that I found from Ford that shows installing the Cobra cover. And it goes through the bolts and where that they should be located. Um, and also the torque specs. And I'm gonna leave this uh, in the description as well, so you can go to it. But I think it'll make things a lot easier so you know where everything goes. All right. And then it starts, and then it talks about start mounting everything back in place, lining things up, and then installing the bolts. With my in swap kit that I got, I've, I got the hardware for everything, so I ended up just using that. Once the timing chain cover is on, you can install your harmonic balancer. And I want to stop here real quick because we talked about removing the um, removing the, the timing chain cover. Now to this point there's been a lot of lot of labor that's involved, a lot of work. But since you're there, there's a couple things that I want you to think about. The first one is if you wanted to you can replace your timing chain assembly. Now, if you go to start up your, your engine and you get what sounds like a main bearing knock to get oil pressure, that's probably not a main bearing knock. That's probably the, the tensioners failing. Uh, there's, there's an issue with the primary tensioners failing on these engines. You may 
want to replace your timing chain assembly at, uh, at this point and then complete the Eden swap. Totally up to you, but this would be the time to do it. Now, if you are going to do it, you're going to need to get a, uh, special, a special kit that holds the cams in place so you don't, so you don't damage your engine and bend a valve. So here is the kit, and this is what I would recommend if you're, uh, you're going to do that. The other thing, too, is if you're going to replace that, um, that timing uh, chain assembly, your valve covers are loose. You may, and totally, you know, uh, up to you, but you may have to remove your, your, your booster to do this, your, your brake booster, but you could do cams at this time if you wanted to. You have everything apart. So if you wanted to do cams, you can put that in. I have a video that goes over installing cams and, you know, things to look out for. So, you know, like if you're going to uh, do big cams, make sure that you upgrade the pivot pins, you know, uh, springs, you know, as well and a bunch of other things and, you know, so I have a video on all that, but if you wanted to put in a different set of cams that are similar to stock, but give you a little bit more horsepower, the 99 to 01 Cobra cams or the 96 to 98 Cobra cams would be an awesome upgrade. So the stock intake cam on a 0304 Cobra or Mach 1 or Mercury Marauder is 186 duration. The 9901 Cobra intake cam is a 200 duration. The 96 to 98, which is a split duration intake cam, is a 204 degree duration. The 96 to 98 were the best cams. I ended up putting in 9901s that were low mileage takeoffs, or actually, I'm sorry, they were takeoffs, there were no miles on them. And I got them from DSS because they had a bunch of heads back in the day that they upgraded cams on and valve train and then uh, shipped it off. So mine had zero miles, but uh, they were 99 to 01. So if you wanted to replace your intake cams, good time to do it. Just, you know, uh, totally up to you. Not needed to do the, the Eden swap by any means, but since you have everything apart, if you want to do cams, it's a good time. So now you're going to install your harmonic balancer. It talks about here, be careful not to tear or rip the timing cover seal. I'll tell you this right now, replace the seal. Don't use the old one because you're trusting that old seal, which might have been leaking on the last person's engine. Just replace it, very cheap to do. All you gotta do is just tap it in place. Tap the old one out, tap the new one in, similar to a rear main seal. Install the pulleys, so it talks about a few different pulleys that you need to install. Power steering pump, you're going to put that back in place, tighten that down. EGR. So EGR and EGR tube, this is when you're going to do it. Um, it is the Cobra EGR and EGR tube, your Mach 1, Marauder, what have you, that is not going to fit. Uh, the EGR has the port in a different location on the EGR valve itself and the tube is different. It's not going to work unless you get the Cobra one. Now the, the person that did this did the EGR delete. So I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't delete the EGR. Couple reasons why. First reason is it does not add that much heat to your engine and it is only open during partial throttle. Not wide open throttle, not a lot of throttle, partial throttle. Second thing is the EGR a lot of times is starting to be inspected besides uh, catalytic converters. So if you move to a new state, a lot of states will have an initial vehicle inspection or they'll have inspections every couple years. So if they look underneath the hood, yeah, they're going to see the Eden there, but some cars come with superchargers, but if they see that that uh, EGR is missing because they know what they look like, then get you, uh, they get you on that. Um, the other thing too is if you're in a state that has regular emissions and does testing, 
on I believe 2001 and up vehicles you can have no more than one sensor not ready okay the EGR could be that one but that means that your cats need to work so you need to have the OEM cats and they need to function properly your EVAP system has to be working everything else has to be working because you used your one instance just on that EGR tube so just put the EGR on doesn't weigh that much is not going to cost you any horsepower you know it's it's really not a big deal and one last point on it I know someone's gonna say but it puts exhaust heat into the engine yes at part throttle it does that a little bit but there's no oxygen that's coming in one to two percent max that's going into it so it's actually going to make you run a little bit richer uh, which is why if you delete your EGR it changes your tune but with the EGR on it actually helps richen it because it's injecting air in that doesn't have much oxygen so instead of having like 10 percent you're looking at uh, zero one two percent that's about it and when it comes to engine blow by you're putting heat back in your engine so you have your PCV system well that's taking the hot gases that got pushed past the piston rings it's going to go up and then it's going to go out your engine and it's going to be sucked back in it's not any different than the EGR so I'll get off my soapbox but just leave the emission stuff on it so all right back to this okay so now you're gonna lower your intake in place uh, you're gonna do that without the IC adapter um, when you put the intake in place don't forget the gasket and you're going to uh, start tightening everything down uh, put on your coolant crossover and there's an image right here and there it is now when they talk about bleeding this later on you bleed it right here you open up this cap and you fill it full of fluid obviously all your hoses and everything needs to be connected but that's where you top it off if you just put coolant in your radiator and you don't put in coolant there the block is not going to get filled you're going to have a massive air bubble in there and you will overheat your engine substantially bad so make sure you do that all right so you're putting on your coolant crossover tube so you've got that done all right uh, lube the o-rings you can replace them if you wanted to it says lube them but honestly I'd replace them uh, okay go ahead and install the supercharger so the intercooler is going to be bolted to the supercharger be careful with those bolts it does say use uh, Loctite red and tighten them down don't use Loctite red everybody says use Loctite red don't use it you will not be able to easily take it off and you're gonna snap them when you try to remove it at some point use Loctite blue to uh, to attach the intercooler to the supercharger that can be removed whereas red you need 300 plus degrees of heat to loosen that up all right uh, so go ahead this talks about bolting things down and it talks about your IC adapter and the full bolt full bolts tighten it up it says make sure you install the nipples into the intercooler replace the o-rings there's four of them you can get those over at Harbor Freight or you can get them on eBay Harbor Freight's got a o-ring kit replace the o-rings and the o-rings that you need are in that kit okay so now it talks about tightening everything down the way that you need to tighten it and let's see what this shows okay that's just a water pump okay nothing to see there all right let's go down okay now install the idlers the idler that replaces the Mach 1 alternator uh, so the new alternator the Cobra one is going to go in a different place it's going to be essentially directly below where your battery is at towards the engine a little bit but that's where the new alternator is going to go so it talks about tightening back up the AC compressor that you loosened up at that point you have enough to install your six rib belt your accessory belt and then it says next is the fun part so the power steering line it is really close to the lower uh, cage 
Um, so you're going to have to mold that. You're going to have to bend it, tweak it, everything else. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to put the supercharger cage pulley on it. So speaking of the cage, so I made a video on how to rebuild the lower cage. Pay close attention to the O-rings that go in it. Um, they're close to 20 years old and they tend to dry rot pretty badly. And when they go bad, they just kind of work their way out and things get out of balance and run really, really bad. And it could potentially you know, damage your motor with the vibration, your, your bearings that is. So uh, in my video, I show how to replace those and I replaced all three. And uh, to this day, it works perfectly fine on mine. So uh, check out my video on how to do that. And then it talks about, you know, installing the, uh, the cage in which it is counterclockwise. So as the engine spins, it tightens, you know, keeps tightening and tightening and tightening to make sure it doesn't, you know, come off because it's opposite to the engine rotation. All right, install the upper alternator bracket using uh, the bolts that you have, or you can get some generic ones. So it's actually going to go, your alternator is going to be kind of off to the side there. Let's see if he's got an image. And then there it is. So that's where your uh, alternator is going to go. All right, so you need to do the upper uh, bracket and then uh, you got to install the lower as well and install your alternator. It's pretty straightforward. Um, just make sure to get everything straight and you know you should be good to go. Uh, I didn't run into any alignment issues with, uh, with belts. Um, I was able to just move everything over and it was all good. Um, I did change my tensioner for the supercharger to an aftermarket one that gives a little bit more tension but for that one I had to shim it uh, about four millimeters. But if you're using the stock stuff, you should be good to go. The pulley bridge talks about installing that next. Uh, so the pulley bridge kind of goes in front of everything. So this right here, minus the Metco piece, is your, uh, your bridge assembly. And that's what holds the uh, tensioner and then the, uh, the idlers that you see for the, uh, for the supercharger. All right, talks about electric water pump, and it will rub up against the, uh, the bridge potentially. So you might have to do some uh, little bit of grind in there. Power steering reservoir bracket, uh, go ahead and mount that, and then connect everything up to the power steering pump. And once you do all this, and you fill the fluids, and I'm kind of skipping forward, but you're going to have to bleed the power steering system. And you do that by topping off the fluid and turning it from lock to lock. And sometimes you want to leave it cranked to one side and run it for, for a few seconds, you know, three, four seconds, and then do the other side. The power steering pump will make a strange noise, but once all the air bubbles are out, it will just be back to normal. So just kind of a heads up, you got to pay attention to that. All right, so it talks about power steering, uh, hoses back on. Okay, reinstall the radiator fan. Um, put that back on, make sure you don't damage anything. Uh, tighten up the pulley bridge. And then there's an idler that's next to uh, the crank pulley, so you want to make sure that that's there. Next, hook up the intercooler lines. So there's a few different lines, and then it talks about them down here as well. I didn't use all of the lines myself. I ended up having an aftermarket heat exchanger, uh, Lightning Force Performance one. And because of that, I kind of didn't need all of them. Uh, I think I only used one or two of the lines and then kind of made everything else. I have all the lines, and I still have them. I should probably throw them up on eBay. but but you may not need all the lines. Speaking of heat exchangers, so the stock one, which I believe was made by Garrett's, I'd recommend chucking that. And, and I say that because at eight pounds of boost from the factory, 
it was marginal at best and you start increasing the boost and, and the Eden is known as a heaton because it kind of heat soaks. And you have to remember that, that the Cobra is an eight and a half to one compression engine and your Mach 1 is uh, 10 to 1. I think the Marauders are the same. And the 99 to 01 Cobras, I think those were 9.7 to 1. But correct me and keep me honest if I'm wrong on that. But you're going from a low compression engine to a high compression engine. So because of that, that's going to create additional heat and raise your IATs. And then you're putting a supercharger up on top at 8 PSI with a heat exchanger that was marginal before. So now you got even more heat. Now I bring this up because your chance of detonation goes up quite a bit. So talks about um, installing the heat exchanger and oh one thing the, the bracket that, uh, that the heat exchanger goes on there's a few different aftermarket heat exchangers they all fit on the factory bracket so just so you know, you, you will be able to mount it. The um, Lightning Force Performance one is rather large and thick. Um, so it's longer than the original one. It's thicker. When you go to put your bumper back on, you're going to have to uh, cut out small pieces on the underside of your front bumper. Otherwise, you will never get the bottom push pins to go in. So I had to remove some material on mine so I can do that. So just kind of a heads up. You can't see it from the front. You can't see it from the top. But underneath, you can see that you had to take part of the bumper off. All right, so heat exchanger is in. Connect up all your lines. So you understand how all these connect. Here's an image that I found online that talks about the flow of how the coolant flows through the uh, heat exchanger through the intercooler and through the supercharger. So this is good to have so you understand, you know, essentially how it works. So if you need to plumb your own, you know, your own hoses or do something, this is, uh, this is how it works. All right. Uh, intercooler pump mounted to the bracket, mount the bracket to the car, or you could mount the bracket first and then the pump. But you're definitely going to need the bracket. I'd recommend getting a new pump. They're known for going bad. So on my car, I put in an inline IAT sensor. So if my intercooler uh, pump was ever to fail, um, I get alerts on the inside of my car because I could see that my IATs jumped and I get a light that flashes when that happens. So let you know if you're starting to get a heat soak, but also that pump fails, you want to know so you don't uh, cut loose your engine. Uh, you are going to need to get a pigtail for it that plugs into it. And then I'll get into the wiring in just a second. So it talks about hooking it up, talks about the uh, pigtail. All right, so here he describes how to connect everything. But here's a couple images for you. So this. Uh, this image that I found, this shows you how it uh, connects up. So you can see where you need to put a relay in. Uh, 30 amp relay is fine. I did mine with key on. And uh, here's how I tied it in on my car. On your uh, mass airflow sensor, so cut the two outside wires. So I think there's like five wires, if I remember correct. So it's the two outside ones. So an outside on one side, outside on the other side. Those two wires you're then going to extend. And what those two wires do is they supply the signal to the PCM on what the intake air temp is. So at your mass airflow sensor, you're normally going to read, you know, 10 to... Uh, 15 degrees or so over ambient temp. So if it's, you know, 80 degrees out, it might read 90, 95, what have you. Because, you know, that's, that's underneath the hood, your engine's hot. The way that these PCMs work is that if it detects an extremely high uh, IAC temp, it will start pulling timing. Now this is rather important to know because if you don't do this, and you leave the IATs at what's called the IAT1 location, 
which is on your mass airflow sensor, if your, inter if your intercooler gets heat soaked, you're still at whatever that your max timing is set for. That can cause detonation. So what you want to do is you want to retard the timing when it gets super hot to help save the engine. That's the IAT2 sensor. So you'll see on the back of the supercharger on the driver's side that there's a sensor that goes there. That sensor was wired in on a 0304 Cobra. So you're going to take those two wires, those two outside ones, you're going to extend them and you're going to wire it in to that IA22 sensor. So when that thing's reading, you know, 130, 140, 150, it's going to start pulling timing to keep your engine from detonating to help save the motor. All right. Okay, uh, alternator pigtail. So you can get a pigtail for it, and it talks about, you know, for this. So I was able to bend the wire, the, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the output wire, that, that four gauge wire, and make it work. Um, I didn't have to extend mine. And then it talks about the other wires that, because uh, it is a different connector on the alternator for a Cobra than it is for a Mach 1. They make an adapter for it. Um, you can find it on eBay uh, and on Amazon. Uh, here's a picture of mine, but I just used the adapter. And I actually didn't need to extend anything um, as far as that 4-gauge wire. But I had to tweak it and then I had to heat shrink it because as I you know had to, to bend the end on it I wanted to make sure that it couldn't possibly you know touch anything metal on the alternator since that's the power wire and you know if that's short your car melts down so I ended up bending mine but just to make sure because it was fairly getting fairly close and I didn't want it to potentially touch I put a uh, heat shrink tubing over that and uh, did two layers of that just uh, you know insurance okay it talks about the DPFE sensor you because it is in a new location and it's sitting on kind of like a, a rail that has your your it holds your EGR it holds the DPFE and it holds your, your fuel rail uh, sensor I believe kind of uh, maybe doesn't attach to that bracket but it but it's right there you're gonna have to extend the wires for that uh, just like you did with the IC make sure you, you don't cross it because you need to make sure if these are correct uh, otherwise your EGR is not gonna work that's 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 used for your EGR and all your other emission stuff Okay, uh, throttle cable. So you need to disconnect that from the pedal. You need to connect a new one on it. Then it talks about your cruise control cable. So you're going to have to take off your driver's side tire. You're going to have to take off the uh, black uh, inner liner. It's got some push pins on it. Um, and then you're going to see in there your cruise, cruise control assembly and you're going to need to take that cable off there and replace it with the uh, replacement one. And then put it all back together. Once you're done with that, uh, go ahead and bolt up the throttle body, uh, the plenum to the throttle body, so your elbow throttle body. You're going to want to connect up the cruise control. There's a bracket and then your cruise control cable and your um, throttle cable. Install your CAI tube, your MAF, your uh, air filter, connect all that up, and then it talks about your radiator support, make sure all that's connected. Connect up all your hoses, um, stock coolant tank, you know, all of your hoses there for your coolant hoses. So I'd recommend going to, to a website which will show you the EGR hoses and how all this hooks up and this helped me out pretty, uh, uh, pretty well. Uh, Danny Johnson's Garage, um, look at his channel. He's got one on where all of the 
uh, vacuum hoses go on a Cobra and that will uh, that will definitely help you. And somewhere in here I, I guess I kind of missed it but um, you need to hook up your uh, that Cobra uh, oil cooler that uh, that I had mentioned um, but you're going to need to you know put that that on once again make sure it is thoroughly cleaned out. Talks about here making sure everything is super tight install the battery tray put on the battery and connect it up. So let me caution you right here. So you've changed the alternator, you've changed a lot of wiring on the car. The chance that you shorted something out is definitely a possibility. I would highly recommend that you get a uh, automotive fuse holder with pigtails. You can get them at Walmart, cheap, what have you. And connect one end to your negative battery cable. Have like a 10 amp fuse in it. Connect the other end to the negative side of your battery. You're going to see a little spark, but the fuse should not blow. If the fuse blows with key on or with with the key off, not key on engine off, but the key off. If it blows, then that means that you have a dead short, and you're going to want to figure out if the alternator shorted out or if something shorted out before you commit and connect that negative cable to the battery. So just a little test that I do just to make sure because you get a dead short, you connect up that negative, you're going to have some hella sparks that are going to happen. So uh, it's probably going to scare the crap out of you too. All right, so you have everything connected up. Make sure that you put all your fluids in. So power steering fluid, engine oil, coolant, Make sure that you put coolant up to the top of that crossover tube. Remember that valve that I talked about that you had a the unit part you need to unscrew and fill with fluid coolant? Make sure you do that. And it talks right here. So add coolant to the uh, supercharger reservoir. You're going to have to, yeah, you're going to have to burp that one. That one's going to be a little bit fun. So here's how I burped. The intercooler reservoir, I ended up getting, I, I've got a uh, set for for doing like coolant flushes and putting a vacuum to the coolant system, uh, pressurizing it, testing the caps, testing radiators, stuff like that. Well, I ended up putting pressure to the uh, intercooler reservoir when it was topped off with fluid not a lot of pressure like 8 PSI. And um, when I turned on key on engine off, which will make the intercooler motor run because we wired it up that way, that pressure will help bleed the system. So there's a little trick for you because it took me a couple hours to bleed it until I said screw it and just put pressure to it. And lo and behold, poof, you know, Clouds parted, sun came out, all that good kind of stuff. Power steering pump, like I said, fluid needs to be topped off with that. Engine oil, need to top that off with that. Probably should, since you had to drain your oil, replace the oil filter. Not a bad idea. And then uh, your regular coolant. Top off the, um, the coolant reservoir for the engine coolant, and then make sure you top off that uh, fill spot on the uh, crossover tube. That is pretty much it. You've got your burping procedure. There's videos on it. Uh, don't watch my video on burping it. Um, I have a good video. It works great for Mach 1s, Marauders, 9901 Cobras, but it doesn't work with the uh, 0304 Cobra crossover tube. And then reinstall your bumper, headlights, fog lights, you know, connecting those back up. And that's it. You did it. So thank you for the journey. I know this is about an hour long. If you make it to the end, first, thank you. And uh, please leave a comment. And I already mentioned subscribing and all that. But thank you. Post this if you can. Post, I made it to the end in the comment. If you did that, then, then I know that some actually did watch it to the end. But uh, yeah, so you just did an in swap. You're now an expert. So thanks again for watching Mike's Garage.